The reading of the most set-apart scripture, Genesis through Revelation, the second book of the Torah, Shemoth, also known as Exodus. Chapter 20. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving commitment to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to naught, for Yahuwah does not leave the one unpunished who brings his name to naught. Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yahuwah, your Elohim. You do not do any work, you, nor your sons, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle nor your sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother so that your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahuwah, your Elohim, is giving you. You do not murder. You do not commit adultery. You do not steal. You do not bear false witness against your neighbor. You do not covet your neighbor's house. You do not covet your neighbor's wife nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. And all the people saw the thunders, the lightning flashes, the voice of the chauffeur, and the mountain smoking. And the people saw it, and they trembled and stood at a distance. And said to Moshe, You speak with us, and we hear, but let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moshe said to the people, Do not fear, for Elohim has come to prove you, and in order that his fear be before you, so that you do not sin. So the people stood at a distance, but Moshe drew near the thick darkness, where Elohim was. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Say this to the children of Yisrael. You yourselves have seen that I have spoken to you from the heavens. You do not make besides me mighty ones of silver, and you do not make mighty ones of gold for yourselves. Make a slaughter place of earth for me, and you shall slaughter on it your sending offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your cattle. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, 
I shall come to you and bless you. And if you make me a slaughter place of stone, do not build it of cut stone. For if you use your chisel on it, you have profaned it. Nor do you go up by steps in my slaughter place, lest your nakedness be exposed on it. Chapter 21 These are the right rulings which you are to set before them. When you buy a Hebrew servant, he serves six years, and in the seventh he goes out free for naught. If he comes in by himself, he goes out by himself. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master has given him a wife, and she has borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children are her masters, and he goes out by himself. And if the servant truly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, let me not go out free. Then his master shall bring him before Allahim, and shall bring him to the door, or to the doorpost, and his master shall pierce his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. And when a man sells his daughter to be a female servant, she does not go out as the male servants do. If she is displeasing in the eyes of her master, who has engaged her to himself, then he shall let her be ransomed. He shall have no authority to sell her to a foreign people because of him deceiving her. And if he has engaged her to his son, he is to do to her as the right of daughters. If he takes another wife, her food, her covering, and her marriage rights are not to be diminished. And if he does not do these three for her, then she shall go out for naught without silver. He who strikes a man so that he dies shall certainly be put to death. But if he did not lie in wait, but Allahim delivered him into his hand, then I shall appoint for you a place where he is to flee. But when a man acts presumptuously against his neighbor to kill him by treachery, you are to take him even from my slaughter place to die. And he who strikes his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. And he who kidnaps a man and sells him, or if he is found in his hand, shall certainly be put to death. And he who curses his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. And when men strive together, and one strikes the other with a stone or with his fist, and he does not die but is confined to his bed, if he rises again and walks about outside with his staff, then he who struck him shall be innocent. He only pays for lost time and sees to it that he is completely healed. And when a man strikes his male or female servant with a rod so that he dies under his hand, he shall certainly be avenged. But if he remains alive a day or two, he is not avenged, for he is his property. And when men strive, and they shall smite a pregnant woman, and her children come out, yet there is no injury, he shall certainly be punished according as the woman's husband lays upon him, and he shall give through the judges. But if there is injury, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burned, wound for wound, lash for lash. 
And when a man strikes the eye of his male or female servant and destroys it, he is to let him go free for the sake of his eye. And if he knocks out the tooth of his male or female servant, he is to let him go free for the sake of his tooth. And when an ox gores a man or a woman to death, then the ox shall certainly be stoned, and its flesh is not eaten, and the owner of the ox is innocent. However, if the ox were previously in the habit of goring, and its owner has been warned, and he has not kept it confined, so that it has killed a man or a woman, the ox is stoned, and its owner also is put to death. If a sin covering is laid upon him, then he shall give the ransom of his life. Whatever is laid upon him, whether it has gored a son or gored a daughter, according to this right ruling, it is done to him. If the ox gores a male or female servant, he is to give to their master thirty shekels of silver, and the ox is stoned. And when a man opens a pit, or if a man digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls in it, the owner of the pit is to repay. He is to give silver to their owner, and the dead beast is his. And when the ox of a man smites the ox of his neighbor, and it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the silver from it, and also divide the dead ox. Or if it has known that the ox was previously in the habit of goring, and its owner has not kept it confined, he shall certainly repay ox for ox, while the dead beast is his. Chapter 22 When a man steals an ox or a sheep and shall slaughter it or sell it, he repays five cattle for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. If the thief is found breaking in, and he is struck so that he dies, there is no guilt for his bloodshed. If the sun has risen on him, there is guilt for his bloodshed. He shall certainly repay. If he has not the means, then he shall be sold for his theft. If the theft is indeed found alive in his hand, whether it is an ox or donkey or sheep, he repays double. When a man lets a field or vineyard be grazed bare and lets loose his livestock and it feeds in another man's field, he repays from the best of his own field and the best of his own vineyard. When fire breaks out, and spreads to thorn bushes, so that stacked grain, or standing grain, or the field is consumed, he who kindled the fire shall certainly repay. When a man gives silver or goods to his neighbor to guard, and it is stolen out of the man's house, if the thief is found, he repays double. If the thief is not found, then the master of the house shall be brought before Elohim to see whether he has put his hand into his neighbor's goods. For every matter of transgression, for ox, for donkey, for sheep, for garment, or for whatever is lost, which another claims to be his, let the matter of them both come before Elohim. And whomever Elohim declares wrong repays double to his neighbor. When a man gives to his neighbor a donkey, or ox, or sheep, or any beast to watch over, 
and it dies, or is injured, or is driven away while no one is looking, let an oath of Yahuwah be between them both, that he has not put his hand into his neighbor's goods. And the owner of it shall accept that, and he does not repay. But if it is indeed stolen from him, he repays to its owner. If it is torn to pieces, then let him bring it for evidence. He does not repay what was torn. And when a man borrows from his neighbor, and it is injured or dies while the owner of it is not present, he shall certainly repay. But if its owner was with it, he does not repay. If it was hired, he is entitled to the hire. And when a man entices a maiden who is not engaged and lies with her, he shall certainly pay the bride price for her to be his wife. If her father absolutely refuses to give her to him, he pays according to the bride price of maidens. Do not allow a practicer of witchcraft to live. Anyone lying with a beast shall certainly be put to death. He who slaughters to an Allahim except to Yahuwah only is put under the ban. Do not tread down a sojourner or oppress him, for you were sojourners in the land of Mitzrayim. Do not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If you do afflict them at all, if they cry out to me at all, I shall certainly hear their cry. And my wrath shall burn, and I shall kill you with the sword. Your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. If you do lend silver to any of my people, the poor among you, you are not to be like one that lends on interest to them, to him. Do not lay interest on him. If you take your neighbor's garment as a pledge at all, you are to return it to him before the sun goes down. For that is his only covering. It is his garment for his skin. What does he sleep in? And it shall be that when he cries to me, I shall hear, for I show favor. Do not rival an Alehim, nor curse a ruler of your people. Do not delay giving your harvest and your vintage. Give me the firstborn of your sons. Likewise, you are to do with your oxen, with your sheep, it is to be with its mother seven days. On the eighth day, you give it to me. And you are set apart men to me. And you do not eat any meat which is torn to pieces in the field. You throw it to the dogs. Chapter 23 Do not bring a false report. Do not put your hand with the wrong to be a malicious witness. Do not follow a crowd to do evil, nor bear witness in a strife, so as to turn aside after many, to turn aside what is right. And do not favor a poor man in his strife. When you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall certainly return it to him. When you see the donkey of him who hates you lying under its burden, you shall refrain from leaving it to him. You shall certainly help him. Do not turn aside the right ruling of your poor in his strife. Keep yourself far from a false matter. And do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I do not declare the wrong right. 
and do not take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the seeing one and twist the words of the righteous. And do not oppress a sojourner, as you yourselves know the heart of a sojourner, because you were sojourners in the land of Mitzrayim. And for six years you are to sow your land, and shall gather its increase. But the seventh year you are to let it rest, and shall leave it, and the poor of your people shall eat, and what they leave the beasts of the field eat. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive yard. Six days you are to do your work, and on the seventh day you rest, in order that your ox and your donkey might rest, and the son of your female servant, and the sojourner be refreshed. And in all that I have said to you, take heed, and make no mention of the name of other mighty ones. Let it not be heard from your mouth. Three times in the year you are to celebrate a festival to me. Guard the festival of Matzot. Seven days you eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you at the time appointed in the new moon of Abib. For in it you came out of Mitzrayim, and do not appear before me empty-handed. And the festival of the harvest, the first fruits of your labors, which you have sown in the field, and the festival of the ingathering, at the outgoing of the year, when you have gathered in the fruit of your labors from the field. Three times in the year all your males are to appear before the master, Yahuwah. Do not slaughter the blood of my slaughtering with leavened bread, and the fat of my festival shall not remain until morning. Bring the first of the first fruits of your land into the house of Yahuwah, your Allahim. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. See, I am sending a messenger before you to guard you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Be on guard before him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he is not going to pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if you diligently obey his voice and shall do all that I speak, then I shall be an enemy to your enemies and a distresser to those who distress you. For my messenger shall go before you and shall bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hiwites and the Yebusites, and I shall cut them off do not bow down to their mighty ones, nor serve them, nor do according to their works, but without fail overthrow them, and without fail break down their pillars, and you shall serve Yahuwah, your Allahim, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and I shall remove sickness from your midst. None shall miscarry or be barren in your land. I shall fill the number of your days. I shall send my fear before you and cause confusion among all the people to whom you come and make all your enemies turn their backs to you. And I shall send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hiwites, the Canaanites, and the Hittite from before you. 
I shall not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become a waste and the beast of the field become too numerous for you. Little by little, I shall drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. And I shall set your border from the Sea of Reeds to the Sea of the Philistines and from the wilderness to the river, for I shall give the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. Do not make a covenant with them, nor with their mighty ones. Let them not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me when you serve their mighty ones, when it becomes a snare to you. Chapter 24 and to Moshe he said, Come up to Yahuwah, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Yisrael, and you shall bow yourselves from a distance. But Moshe shall draw near to Yahuwah by himself, and let them not draw near nor let the people go up with him. And Moshe came and related to the people all the words of Yahuwah, and all the right rulings. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahuwah has spoken we shall do. And Moshe wrote down all the words of Yahuwah, and rose up early in the morning and built a slaughter place at the foot of the mountain and twelve standing columns for the twelve tribes of Yisrael. And he sent young men of the children of Yisrael, and they offered ascending offerings and slaughtered slaughterings of peace offerings to Yahuwah of bulls. And Moshe took half the blood and put it in basins and half the blood he sprinkled on the slaughter place and he took the book of the covenant and read in the hearing of the people and they said all that yahuwah has spoken we shall do and obey and moshe took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, See, the blood of the covenant which Yahuwah has made with you concerning all these words. And Moshe went up, also Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Yisrael. And they saw the Elohim of Yisrael, and under his feet like a paved work of sapphire stone, and like the heavens for brightness. Yet he did not stretch out his hand against the chiefs of the children of Yisrael. And they saw Elohim, and they ate and drank. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Come up to me on the mountain, and be there, while I give you tablet of stone, and the Torah, and the command which I have written to teach them. And Moshe arose with his assistant, Yahushua, and Moshe went up to the mountain of Elohim, and he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you, and see, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has matters, let him go to them. And Moshe went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. And the esteem of Yahuwah dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moshe out of the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the esteem of Yahuwah 
was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain before the eyes of the children of Yisrael. And Moshe went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain, and it came to be that Moshe was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. Chapter 25 And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Yisrael, that they take up a contribution for me. From everyone whose heart moves him, you shall take up my contribution. And this is the contribution which you take up from them, gold and silver and bronze and blue and purple and scarlet material and fine linen and goat's hair and ram's skins dyed red and fine leather and acacia wood oil for the light spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense shoham stones and stones to be set in the shoulder garment and in the breastplate and they shall make me a set-apart place and i shall dwell in their midst according to all that i show you the pattern of the dwelling place and the pattern of all its furnishings make it exactly so and they shall make an ark of acacia wood two and a half cubits long a cubit and a half wide and a cubit and a half high and you shall overlay it with clean gold inside and outside you shall overlay it and you shall make on it a molding of gold all around and you shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them in its four corners two rings on one side and two rings on the other side and you shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold and shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to lift up the ark by them the poles are in the rings of the ark they are not taken from it and into the ark you shall put the witness which i give you and you shall make a lid of atonement of clean gold two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide and you shall make two cherubim of gold make them of beaten work at the two ends of the lid of atonement and make one carob at one end and the other carob at the other end make the carabim from the lid of atonement at its two ends and the carabim shall be spreading out their wings above covering the lid of atonement with their wings with their faces toward each other the faces of the cherubim turned toward the lid of atonement and you shall put the lid of atonement on top of the ark and put into the ark the witness which i give you and i shall meet with you there and from above the lid of atonement from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the witness i shall speak to you all that which i command you concerning the children of israel and you shall make a table of acacia wood two cubits long a cubit wide and a cubit and a half high and you shall overlay it with clean gold and shall make a molding of gold all around and shall make for it a rim of hand of a handbreadth all 
around and shall make a gold molding for the rim all around. And you shall make for it four rings of gold and put the rings on the four corners that are at its four legs. The rings are close to the rim as holders for the poles to lift the table. And you shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. And the table shall be lifted with them and you shall make its dishes and its ladles and its jars and its bowls for pouring. Make them of clean gold and you shall put the showbread on the table before me continually and you shall make a lampstand of clean gold. The lampstand is made of beaten work. Its base and its shaft, its cups, its ornamental knobs, and blossoms are from it. And six branches shall come out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of one side, and three branches of the lampstand out of the other side. Three cups made like almond flowers on one branch, with ornamental knob and blossom, and three cups made like almond flowers on the other branch with ornamental knob and blossom. So for the six branches coming out of the lampstand, and on the lampstand itself are four cups made like almond flowers with ornamental knob and blossom, and a knob under the first two branches of the same, and a knob under the second two branches of the same, and a knob under the third two branches of the same, according to the six branches coming out of the lampstand. Their knobs and their branches are of the same, all of it one beaten work of clean gold. And you shall make seven lamps for it, and they shall mount its lamps so that they give light in front of it. And its snuffers and their trays are of clean gold. It is made of a talent of clean gold with all these utensils. So see and do according to to the pattern which was shown to you on the mountain. Chapter 26 And make the dwelling place with ten curtains of fine woven linen, and blue, and purple, and scarlet material. Make them with cherubim, the work of a skilled workman. The length of each curtain is twenty-eight cubits, and the width of each curtain four cubits, all the curtains having one measure. Five curtains are joined to each other, and five curtains are joined to each other, and you shall make loops of blue on the edge of the end curtain on one set and do the same on the edge of the end curtain of the second set. Make 50 loops in the one curtain and make 50 loops on the edge of the end curtain of the second set, the loops being opposite to each other. And you shall make 50 hooks of gold and shall join the curtains together with the hooks, and the dwelling place shall be one. And you shall make curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the dwelling place. Make eleven curtains. The length of each curtain is thirty cubits, and the width of each curtain four cubits. 
one measure to the eleven curtains, and you shall join the five curtains by themselves, and the six curtains by themselves, and you shall double over the six curtains at the front of the tent, and you shall make fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in one set, and fifty loops on the edge of the curtain of the second set. And you shall make fifty bronze hooks, and put the hooks into the loops, and join the tent together, and it shall be one. And the overlapping part of the rest of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remains, shall hang over the back of the dwelling place. And a cubit on one side and a cubit on the other side of what remains of the length of the curtains of the tent is to hang over the sides of the dwelling place on this side and on that side to cover it. And you shall make a covering of ram's skins dyed red for the tent and a covering of fine leather above that. And for the dwelling place you shall make the boards of acacia wood, standing up. Ten cubits is the length of a board, and a cubit and a half the width of each board. Two tenons in each board for binding one to another. Do the same for all the boards of the dwelling place, and you shall make the boards for the dwelling place, twenty boards for the south side, and make forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under each of the boards for its two tenons, and for the second side of the dwelling place, on the north side, twenty boards, and there forty sockets of silver, two sockets under each of the boards, and for the extreme parts of the dwelling place, westward make six boards, and make two boards for the two back corners of the dwelling place, and they are double beneath, and similarly they are complete to the top to the one ring. So it is for both of them. They are for the two corners. And they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver, sixteen sockets, two sockets under the one board and two sockets under the other board. And you shall make bars of acacia wood five for the boards on one side of the dwelling place, and five bars for the boards on the other side of the dwelling place, and five bars for the boards of the side of the dwelling place, for the extreme parts westward, with the middle bar in the midst of the boards, going through from end to end and overlay the boards with gold, and make their rings of gold as holders for the bars, and overlay the bars with gold. And you shall rise up the dwelling place according to its pattern, which you were shown on the mountain. And you shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet material, and fine woven linen, the work of a skilled workman, made with cherubim. And you shall put it on the four columns of acacia wood overlaid with gold, their hooks of gold upon four sockets of silver. And you shall hang the veil from the hooks, and shall bring the ark of the witness there, behind the veil, 
and the veil shall make a separation for you between the set-apart and the most set-apart place. And you shall put the lid of atonement on the ark of the witness in the most set-apart place. And you shall set the table outside the veil and the lampstand opposite the table on the side of the dwelling place toward the south and put the table on the north side and you shall make a covering for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine woven linen made by a weaver and you shall make for the covering five columns of acacia wood and overlay them with gold their hooks of gold and you shall cast five sockets of bronze for them <laughs>